Hey guys, welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. I'm really jazzed this week to tell you about Barbus holsteri, the African butterfly barb. At just barely over an inch, they are absolutely stunning and extremely rare. I set up a little tiny breeding tank to show you their behavior and uh, hope you enjoy it. So what I did here was just set up a little tank that I'm gonna use for breeding purposes. It's, it's meant to sort of mimic their natural environment. Since they come from the tributaries in the Congo region, it's generally shallow, shady, high tannins, very soft water, very cool water with sand, some driftwood, and leaf litter. So here I added some root wood, some anubias, which are actually from that biotope, as well as some almond leaves that I had laying around. Over time, those will give the water a really rich yellow color that the fish very much enjoy. You can see that they're not really a schooling fish like a tetra. They're a barb, so they establish more of a pecking order. It's a good idea to have a decent group. For the purposes of this tank, I put in six, which was two males and four females, because uh, I'm really hoping to breed them. Part of the reason this fish is so rare and hard to get is not only because they're from Africa, but also because they're from the area where the Ebola virus originated. So they tend to be pretty expensive and not a whole lot of people are working there collecting fish. Their breeding's pretty interesting, really. They're seasonal spawners, generally spawning somewhere around, you know, April to June and again in the fall from September to November. They scatter their eggs, and they're not particularly prone to eating them. However, they will eat the fry once they emerge. Also interesting to note is that they are a fish whose gender is strongly affected by temperature. So in the wild, you will find ranges of temperature anywhere from 62 degrees to 75, but for breeding purposes, you wanna shoot for about 68 to get an equal gender ratio. If it gets any warmer than that, you tend to have uh, male heavy babies. In the wild, these guys are predators for aquatic insects, little tiny larvae and micro crustaceans that they find in the water column. They also pick at the infusoria and other microbes that grow on the leaf litter, which is part of the reason I, I incorporated it here. In a tank, they will take dry food, but it's a really good idea to also offer them some alternatives like Daphnia or baby brine, either live or frozen, as well as the dried flakes or small pellets. These guys are only an inch, so they have pretty small mouths. If you can get your hands on some, I would really recommend setting up a breeding tank. They're just, they're hard to get and absolutely stunning. Interesting to note as well is that they have an obvious sexual dimorphism. The males get bright yellow fins and are narrower of body. The females are noticeably fatter and have clear fins. There's a female, and there's the male with the yellow. Really, really, really cool little fish. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to stop by and see me on Facebook, as well as visit my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and a peek into all things nano. Make sure as well to check back and subscribe so that you can catch up on Tuesday's tips and the Sunday Species Spotlights.